All right, Dave, we had to redo the intro to this show because as we were recording, there was a tweet from CM Punk saying that he was going to be live on Rampage with an announcement about the title. That announcement, I don't think was 100% clear by the way that he said it, but uh, it sounds like he is hurt and they're going to do an interim championship. What is the latest here? Yeah, so they didn't say the injury, but he did say a break, and he did say surgery. It looked like it was maybe his foot, but that is not clear. And he will be out of action, but not for a long period of time. I mean, long enough that, that, you know, they're going to do an interim title, but not like it's not like it's going to be nine months or anything like that, or at least doesn't appear to be, or six months even. But, um so they'll end up the, – the situation, they announced most of it on, this on the air, but there was a few other details. So um, they will open the show with a battle royal. The winner of the battle royal – this is this Wednesday show in Independence, Missouri, which is going to head with the Warriors game. Um, the winner of the battle royal will face John Moxley. The winner of that match will then go to Forbidden Door and will wrestle for the championship – the other, there will be someone that they wrestle, and uh, that is actually, as far as I know, um, that the, that uh, the the opponent will probably be um, the nature of how they're going to get the other opponent will probably be announced imminently. I mean, like it could be, I don't know when, it could be today, tomorrow, whatever, but um, probably not today. But that is essentially the situation. So the one thing, um, I guess that's most important is is how do you do the battle royal and who's going to be in the battle royal because mm-hmm. you know you you would want to think that you would have every top guy now they announced adam page and david finley but you would think you'd want adam page in there brian danielson in there miro um you know um just uh, um you know pretty much every Jericho, uh, Cole, top. Samoa Joe. Uh, yeah, I, I saw all... I saw Lance Archer throw his name in there. Well, I, well, yeah, but I mean the the key to me is 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 that um, you know the, where, where where I saw them and it's still announcing. And of course, this all developed at the last minute. Mm-hmm. I mean, this literally just developed. The the injury was must have been from Wednesday night. So it's not like. Um, you know, everything is in order and everything, but I, I would hope that like page would be in the battle Royal just because he's the former champion. And I, uh, you know, again, Danielson has to, you know, we would want Danielson in there. Um, and then, uh, you know, just anyone else, maybe Pac or, Pen- or Pentagon or Phoenix or whatever. But I mean, the top guys, um, you know, Joe, of course, Adam Cole, of course, of course, Adam Cole, um, you know, and, uh, yeah, just uh, from there, um, you know, I guess probably no MJF. That makes sense at this, at this stage. Whose name, by the way, was never mentioned on the show tonight. And um, and just kind of go from there. And then obviously at some point, you know, Punk will be back and Punk will face the winner. So that is kind of what is happening and the whole thing <coughs> excuse me the whole thing has not been that part's been finalized there's more that has not been finalized that will probably be like i said probably be announced um certainly by wednesday and they'll go in there with that so that's the situation so so the idea of the interim title rather than punk just sort of giving it up and kind of being the number one contender when he gets back uh, is, is that kind of because, you know, that's what the UFC does, or is this just Tony, Tony this is what Tony believes uh, should happen in a scenario like this? I think the feeling is, is they want something resembling a world title out there, but he doesn't want to take it from Punk. And, you know, I think that there were people who thought that they were, you know, Punk would rel- relinquish it, but it was Tony's idea you know, for Punk not to, you know, you, you could have done that and just done it that way. But Tony's idea was that he didn't want in the lineage and history and everything, he didn't want this to be um, a second title run for Punk or 
um, you know, something like that. I mean, he wants to he wants to go with the punk title reign, and there's going to be, you know, obviously with the one pay per view on uh, June 26th that he's out, and you know, some TV. So maybe get a couple of those interim matches to build up, um, you know, the winner facing Punk, um, whenever that would be, uh, you know, when he would when he'd be okay. So, um, yep. I mean, that's yeah. It's. I don't know that it's a perfect scenario, you know, as far as like the buildup or everything. I think that what we talked about before in the sense that they just came off two tournaments. Mm-hmm. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not like a fan of battle Royals determining a championship. So in a sense, he didn't quite do that. You know, I mean, he put a battle Royal winner to be in the match and the idea is Moxley was the number one contender, which I guess kind of tells you, that he probably was planning Punk and Moxley for, um, you know, the uh, um, all-out pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, I'm not sure of that, but just the fact he, he he put Moxley in that position and said that as number one contender means that in his mind he's probably been building Moxley to be number one contender. Um, and, I mean, put it this way. The guy who ends up as interim champion is probably going to be the guy who was going to face Punk at All Out and will face Punk, whether it's All Out or Full Gear or, or, you know, I don't think it's going to be longer than Full Gear. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be All Out or Full Gear. You know, nothing, that's just my speculation, but just the nature of being told that it is not a, a long, you know, six, nine months thing. It's a shorter thing, but it is still surgery. So it is a while. So that's kind of, I think that if nothing else, you know, at the end of the full gear, um, not the full gear, but the um, forbidden door pay-per-view, we're going to kind of, well, you know, we're going to know what his original plan was and eventually what the big match, you know, Punk's opponent will be when Punk comes back. Do we know if this is a straight battle royal? They like to do the casino battle royals with the Jokers and um, all that I stuff. Think, I, I think uh, straight battle royal, yeah. Yeah, not a rumble, um, just a battle royal open show, yeah. And then lastly, you mentioned Forbidden Door, but you didn't say Tanahashi. I, don't, I mean, Tanahashi was who Punk was supposed to face, but he doesn't necessarily fit in the world title picture because he's not an AEW regular but uh, but yeah, but, well, but, but Tanaha- Tanahashi and Punk was going to be for the AEW World Title, right? So, so without saying Tanahashi, to... you do you still lean towards Tanahashi, or you think they're going to tear that thing up and do it all over? Um, it it's one of those things that's in play. There's actually no answer to that question right now, okay? Because it all of a sudden and it's all in play, yeah. But log- logically. You would think that, um, you know, Tanahashi would be, if nothing, you know, if, if I was going to say who's the favorite for that spot, it's going to be a New Japan guy, you know, most likely. You know, whether it's, you know, it, it there's there, you can name all the names, right? You know, the Tanahashi, Will mm-hmm. Ospreay, whatever, you know, all the different guys. But you would think, you would think that the favorite is Tanahashi. Yeah, yeah. But how they do it, um, you know, I mean, I think that there's, you know, there's ideas on the table, but like until they're finalized, because literally they're not finalized right now. It's, you know, they, they can change in a million different ways. But, um, you know, like if you're going to bet on a guy just because he was the guy in the spot, it would probably, you know, if things don't change sem- you know, somewhat significantly, Tanahashi would certainly be. The favorite, right? Mm-hmm. You know, because it was already going to be in the main event. So yeah, so that, that would be the idea. So we could, we could have Moxley Tanahashi, which is interesting because that was the match that was originally going to be in um, Chicago, and because of um, you know the way the U.S. title thing happened, they ended up turning the four way, so they never did do that match. And if you remember. Um, it's, it's like a year ago, almost a year ago, right? They, remember they were they were building the Moxley Tanahashi anyway mm-hmm. in, in the United States, and then it just kind of like it wasn't the right time. So it, that is a match that has had, you know, it's never it's it hasn't happened, but it is a match that has had, um, you know, 
uh, um, it was it was something that was planned someday somehow. So you know that's something that it, I mean it certainly could happen. Yeah. And, and I guess we don't know this yet because, like you said, everything is sort of happening now. You know, but... and it may not be it may it, it may not be it may not be Moxley, but you know another guy, of course, with Moxley that you can always say is Osprey because that's another one open business. Remember they had the match in Chicago, mm-hmm. which was you know to lean to a rematch. That's that's another name out there. The the only reason I bring that up is because they are building towards blood and guts, and Moxley said he was in that match. So I don't know if that changes plans for for what they're doing there. Well, blood and guts will be in Detroit. It will not be on the pay per view. Right. I mean, right. It's not on Forbidden Door. It's going to be three days later. Right. Right. <clears throat> so he can do that. But that makes it interesting because again, you know, Danielson is a key guy, and they're a tag team. Um, you know, and they also had that unbelievable pay per view match. Right. Um. But maybe that's not something you want to do right away. You know. But I. I. We just figure that, you know, again, Danielson, Jericho, um, you know, again, you know, all of those guys, the former champions and, and um, everyone, everyone, everyone that's a top guy should be in that battle royal, I would think. It'll be it, interesting to see. It's kind of too bad that Omega is hurt because you could have also done something like the four former champions all do a match together somehow and then you build towards... You know, well, you know, in, comes in, out of that. In, you know, in in a perfect world, if Omega wasn't hurt, the idea of doing like a a, a, a one night tournament on television, um, you know, this week with Jericho, Omega, um, Moxley, and Adam Page, that would have been awesome. Uh, yeah, to determine, you know, maybe go over two weeks, you know, maybe like do the semifinals on the 15th and then the finals on the 22nd. I mean, yeah, that could have been awesome. But, I, you know, I think that, you know, it, one of the keys to this, I think, is the fact that because Forbidden Door is coming so soon, they wanted to get um, this thing, you know, where you, you know what I mean? They want to get this thing as, as quick as possible. Yeah. And, again, the other thing is if we didn't just have the Owen Hart tournament, I think that there may have been, you know, the idea of like, well, we can do a tournament, but I think the idea is, is that because we just did a tournament, they didn't really want to do another tournament on TV right away. So this is kind of like the solution, you know, it's, it's, it's a late solution. And I, you know, again, if it was perfect pro wrestling and it had been built up for six months, I don't think we would have this, we would have something different, but this is the situation when you're, you know, you're throwing a curveball and like, you know, do you want to do another tournament right now? We just had a tournament, and the answer probably is, is it feels like a repeat. You know, you could have done it. You could have done it, and people would have been fine with it, but, you know, I think that's just the thing. And also, you didn't want a three-week tournament because you've got that thing, and you want to get that, you know, that match announced as soon as you can. So um, that's another aspect of, of going with it this week. Yeah, and if you, I don't know if you remember, but gosh, probably two or three times ago that we had Tony Khan on the show, I asked him if he books with a plan B in mind, and he says no. He just sort of trusts his instincts to be able to pivot when they need to to pivot. So, yeah, it, you know, it's probably exactly what you said. Just you know, he's you're just kind of creating on the fly here. Well, I mean, yeah. It, well, it is it it is creating on the fly. I mean, that's there's you know, it's it's it all came down today, although. I think the thought process probably started maybe, you know, Wednesday night, Thursday morning, mm-hmm. you know, but the confirm the confirmation of the injury was today. Um, and so at that point, it's like, okay, you know, how long is it going to be out? You know, cause again, if he was going to be out nine months, it would be for the championship. I don't think it'd be the interim. Yeah. Um, so it's long, you know, but I think he, because of Forbidden Door, he's got that pay-per-view. You know, if he didn't have that pay-per-view at all, maybe he would have just waited for All Out to do something. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if, if it was, let's just say, let's just say theoretically, right? We're going theoretically, that Punk is ready on All Out. If he didn't have this pay-per-view, he may have just gone in there and just, you know, we don't, you know, we'll have Punk do interviews or we'll do something, we'll build up, we'll, we'll do whatever we're going to do to build up a contender. Um, you know, we'll do the verbal back and forth at the end. And then this is just the championship match. And Punk just doesn't do a match on TV for a couple of months. And you could have done that. But because you have Forbidden Door, I think the feeling is, is that he didn't want to strip Punk, but he did want to have a championship match on Forbidden Door. 
Um, so, you know, that's, I think that's where the solution comes in. I'm, you know, again, I'm speculating, you know, even though, you know, um, I do have a lot of kind of background on it. Mm-hmm. I think that that's probably where the decision comes from. By the way, did you watch, did you watch Rampage tonight? I only watched the punk interview. That's all I got to see. The tag match uh, with the Young Bucks and Lucha Brothers is pretty unbelievable. I mean, it's certainly one of the best matches in, in AW history. Not a, It's not as good as the pay-per-view match in Chicago that they had. But this was this was more of a Arena Mexico match, you know, where it's just, um, you know, it's it's just like we're going to go out here and do, you know, in a, you know a, a super lucha match. I mean, it was very much, it was a super lucha match. It was not American style or anything. It was, you know, a few twists and turns, but it's like they went out there and the crowd ate it up, loved it. Um, it was very interesting that they did not boo Pentagon and Phoenix in, in Ontario. I mean, they certainly didn't boo the Young Bucks, except in one spot in the match, actually, which which was designed for it. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, it was, uh, it was uh, you know, I'm, I'm – as the for the style that they were doing, I was blown away by the timing. I mean, it's just you know you 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 couldn't you know I'm just in I'm in I'm in awe. You know, I've seen this 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 match, not the exact match, but there was um you know this match. I guess that they, this was the ninth time these guys have wrestled, so I guess they can. I guess they can go and do it in their sleep, except they did a whole bunch of new stuff they'd never done before. So um, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was, um, um, if you're into like, like Lucha Libre match of the year, I mean, you know, that's probably it or it's certainly close to it. All right. So uh, we'll, we'll now play the original show that we recorded a few hours ago uh, right now. It's Wrestling Observer Radio Friday evening. Dave, the new issue went up this morning, uh, and main story, obviously, is uh, the MJF situation. So why don't we just start there? Um, also, you know, no Dynamite, no SmackDown stuff, because all that stuff's going on before we are recording. But uh, after, we're, after we're recording. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, after we're recording. So I guess my main question after reading what you wrote, uh, I thought it was a really good story, by the way. Um, And, you know, being there that weekend, we sort of saw things kind of happen uh, while we were there. But I guess my main question coming out of reading your story is, is this wrestling fan base, the AEW wrestling fan base, are they too smart for this kind of stuff? Do you think they'll play along? I I, I kind of I don't I don't know what to predict, but like the way I felt after the promo was a little bit of. MJF fatigue, a little bit of like, I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. But then I saw others who like thought it was one of the greatest promos they've ever seen. I I, I thought the delivery and the promo were fantastic. I thought the I thought performance was great. The I, performance was fantastic. The words were questionable. Um, you know, I mean, when when it was over, it was kind of like, I mean, I I thought he made himself a star. I didn't know it was in anyone's best interest, but then I also realized, which was the key thing I was writing is that judging it based on like I, my immediate judgment is based on, is this good for the company? Will it help them, you know, you know, uh, get more pay-per-views, you know, all the ways that you would normally think. And then I had to go like, you know what? It doesn't matter. It's all about peaking the rating this fall. It's a completely different dynamic. Yes. Like all, all the things. So now will this do that? I mean, that, that I don't know because that's an uncharted, that's uncharted. But it's, you know, obviously the goal right now is to peak in the fall, get these ratings, you know, make it look like it's something hot and have something hot. When you're going in there, you know, renewing your contract, it's a guy who, you know, it's, a, it's an NFL player who's, uh, you know, at that, that key point in his career, who's uh, trying to figure out, you know, steroids and growth hormone and not get caught, <laughs> you know, or a baseball player is probably better because baseball players probably, uh, well, I shouldn't say we're doing more, but, um, um, you know, it was certainly ba- ba- back then they were the ones who were changing the game so rapidly that people had to look into it. 
Right, right, right. But you know the whole thing of like uh, in your contract year, you go in there and uh, have that big year, and then you rest on it for a couple of years, and you're home, you're home free. You got the big contract, and I mean that's the thing with with them, and 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 is is get the contract now. Does this help? I don't know. I mean, because it just played out. It was only week one. You know, you kind of have to watch it play out. But I mean, the thing is, is you want that larger than life guy. And they have a lot of great guys, but they didn't have that larger than life guy. You know, that that, you know, uh, ultimately you want the Roddy Piper, um, you know, who can be the catalyst of everything. And and maybe he can be that. And maybe this is because just doing normal wrestling promos wasn't going to get him there. Um, this might eh, it could backfire, too. You know, it, you know, I mean, there were certainly things. You know, it's like I, I thought the idea of it was solid. I thought that the idea of him being, you know, Jim Cornette, I thought that that was, you know, you know, I mean, it, would it get heat? Maybe, you know, Dan Lambert did the same oh, yeah, thing already. Yeah, I was going to say he was doing Dan Lambert. Well, Dan Lambert already did it. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, I, I, you know, when Dan Lambert did it, I had no problem with it because it was Dan Lambert doing Jim Cornette as a heel manager when... But Dan Lambert never went in there and basically told everyone, hey, I want to go to, to WWE for heat. You know what I mean? Like, we're, but you know what I mean? It's like Dan Lambert, like he, he would say like this wrestling's crappy and all that. You know, that's true. But it was in a way where I don't think anyone was believing it. Whereas with Max, you know, I mean, but this way, when, when Dan Lambert did it, not people didn't cheer. And when Max did, people were cheering, which I thought was like the key thing of like, OK, you know, this is, you know, when you make it cool that your company sucks, um, that's not a good thing. Even, even, you know, if you pop ratings for a little while, you know, you don't want, you know, I mean, people are always talking about, you know, Oh, you know, like the NWO, blah, blah, blah. It's like the NWO, you know, I mean, they did, they did pick the business up greatly. There's no doubt, but they also, it's not what you want to copy. They also went out of business. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you want to, um, you want to, you know, it's slow and steady growth is a lot better than shooting up and then collapsing. Um, and, you know, and, and not having any direction. And I don't know. Um, again, I don't know what the direction is. Um, perhaps the fact that they had punk run him off in Los Angeles, but didn't put it on TV with the idea of, I guess it will get out because everyone will talk about it. Hey, why didn't you do that? But if something's going on with punk and you can't do that, then do you do it with Adam page. I mean, who do you do? What do you do? You know what I mean? There's so many, there's so many different things that the way this can play out and a lot of it's uncharted. Uh, but I was certainly um, I didn't like some of the verbiage and it wasn't, you know, it's just I thought that it was counterproductive, especially right now. Um, I mean, you the, the the one thing that you want with AEW is the perception of it being the cool promotion. I mean, even, it, you know, even if you have better wrestling, you know, or great wrestling and that, that last pay-per-view had incredible matches. But, you know, there's definitely a, you know, a, a, a people who are just um what's the word i'm looking for i mean they're you know they're not they're they're being more and more negative about their different things and um it's less and less cool and all that i mean there's some of that but i mean i again their business metrics i mean they're you know the the ones that i look at the most are phenomenal i mean like they just did two gates over 860 you know in four days i mean you know who's ever done that other than wwe nobody in history ever um, and then they got, uh, you know, another one at the, you know, end of the month with the new Japan. So, I mean, it's like, it's, it's, they're, they're definitely, um, they're definitely hot when it comes to putting on a big show. And there's very few companies in history that can match that aspect of it to this degree. So that's a strong positive. I mean, but there are negatives too. Um, you know, so, you know, I guess we, I don't know. We'll see. But but making the company, making the company um, something uncool is under all circumstances detrimental in the long run. I mean, it's not like, you know, Vince can make himself uncool, but the company was never uncool. You know what I mean? It was uh, the owner. We all hate the owner. Um, in this case, it's the company because the owner ain't going to go out there and be on TV every week and playing, you know, playing bad guy owner. He better not because he won't be good at that. Um, so it's, you know, because Vince did it, you know, and whatever, you know, he had success with it. Eric, you know, I mean, I don't know in hindsight, Eric's a great super performer, super TV performer, but I don't know that Eric, um, playing bad guy with NWO, you know, I mean, if I look at the, the term of it and they went out of business. 
that's the long term of it. You know, it's like, did they have success for a little while? Yeah, but they went out of business. So when you're when short term success leads to going out of business, um, it's not something to brag about or anything to copy. So when he was announced on Monday as showing up on Dynamite, I was a little bit he was he was he was announced on Wednesday, right? That's what I mean. Yeah, on Wednesday. I was a little bit surprised because I oh, thought so was I. I, th- I thought, oh, you know, he's going to be out for a little bit and there will be some stuff bubbling. But then it was like right away he's going to be on the show. And so I immediately wondered because Tony's been saying that the executives were going to be in attendance. And so do you think that played into anything as far as maybe speeding up the angle? But maybe that was the way that it was written all along was they wanted that to happen like immediately after this big pay-per-view. I don't know, because if that was the case, they never should have done what they did on the pay-per-view. I think what they did on the pay-per-view to injure him and then have him come back um, just totally weakened Wardlow. So why, if you're going to, so why even bother um, to do what they did on the pay-per-view? So no, no, I didn't think that. I mean, is it something because everyone's there that all the executives are, you want to show his like um, young talker that he can build this thing around? I mean, you know, maybe, but you know what? I mean, it's like, like somebody just told me today, it's like, if that's the case, he better have already got the extension secret mm-hmm. because because the, if he makes this guy so big and then the guy bolts, you know, how does that make him look? Mm-hmm. So um, it's an, it's a tricky game, you know, and again, to their credit, Tony and Max are, are going to keep everything quiet between the two of them. And that's like a big part of the story. But, um, yeah, it, it, it certainly puts Max in a unique position that he becomes the underground star of the company, if that's how it turns out. And, and now it looks like, you know, the removal of him from the roster and everything. So then we have to watch it play out. So is he going to disappear? Like, did they, did they rush him back for the one TV to pounce on the thing? And now he's going to disappear before he comes back and does whatever he does. I don't know. Um, but if it was that story, he probably shouldn't have come back this week and probably should have saved it for later. Um, because, you know, now all he did was he basically, you know, I mean, kind of like they made Wardlow look really bad. Mm-hmm. And um, they got the thing. And, you know, it's like to me, when he made his comeback, he should stay back. You know what I mean? If he does this and then goes away, that's kind of silly. Um, maybe, but maybe he'll be back on TV every couple of weeks or something. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to play out. And then there was the removing the from the website and the merch and, it, re- it immediately reminded me of of the Sasha and Naomi situation. Yeah. So, um, but whatever, you know. I, oh, I, 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 just, I guess I, I'm sure that was kind of part of the thing, but just because it's so soon after that situation, kind of made me wonder: wait, did the real situation influence the? You know, the it may. It, it may have. I mean, it still reminds me of Pillman. You know what I mean? If it was like I'm thinking, like. If uh, Brian was here, you know, would he, of course, he would want himself off the roster page and, and off the merchandise. That would that'd be the first thing he would want. And he'd want to run around and show up at indie shows and things like that, um, you know, unannounced and all that type of stuff to get himself in the news, you know, in the, you know, that the underground way. That's what they used ECW for the whole time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I think he's I think he's I think he's copying the the Pillman playbook. And that's what and, and, and you know, again, it's different if there was a a website and a roster page and merchandise and everything. Um, Brian, Brian would have done something where he would ask for the merchandise to be, you know, put on pro wrestling tees, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or his, his own way, but not through the company and work out a deal there. And, and that, but he would not want the company selling his merch because then it would be like a giveaway. I mean, he'd be, he'd be real adamant about that. And he'd be real adamant, take my name off the, 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 um, you know, the active roster. So, um, you know, that's, and that's what they're copying. So you have been, I think for most wrestling fans, uh, at least those of us who read your newsletter, you're kind of like the, the person who sort of defines and, and investigates and sort of figures out where the work from the shoot begins. And, um, when we were in, in Vegas, we were trying to, to figure out what was going on, um, and then kind of putting things together when we came back home, do you think, like, how? I guess how early the work started? Like, like what's your sort of oh, so, instinct on that? 
Well, my instinct now is that it was when I look back at everything is that it was always there, you know, from the start of, you know, two, three months ago. So would this Uh, have started when WWE started to say, oh, who's this guy? We're kind of interested in him now. um, They were always interested in him. He's talent. That's not that's nothing new. Um, But it's it's um, yeah, I mean, I think that I mean, when when. I mean, as far as I think from his standpoint, again, Pillman started without telling anyone too, or what he told, you know, different people, different things and all that. But when it, it went, I mean, my gut is, is it, in his mind, it started immediately. And, uh, you know, and, and maybe the goal is to be a free agent and to play both sides early, you know, figure out a way. I don't know. I don't know what his, I don't know what his ultimate goal from this is. If it's, you know, with Brian, it was to get a good contract um, and, and and it'll be and be you know br- brought up to the main event level. Max is already at the main event level. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean that's that's the one difference between this is is he's not sitting there now. Is he making as much money as or some people? No. So obviously the idea is to make that money. And from you know the standpoint of now you know going forward, I mean when you talk about the most valuable guys in the roster, he's he's near the top. So he should be making near the top money. I mean, that's that's true. Maybe and maybe he is for all we know. I mean, my gut was that he was making far less than a lot of people. But one would think if Tony's going to be putting this stuff on his TV, that he's already, um, you know, what I mean, he's already pushing him to a certain level. He's probably going to be paying him at a certain level at that, you know, at, at that near that level, too. But, you know, so much that's going to come out and everything like that and they're going to keep it secret until the next thing plays out so you know this could be a lot of stuff to sit there and watch um and see how it plays out but um you know i mean again he's a talented guy um and they have to figure out what they got to do but they got a you know they got a a, a whole team and uh, you don't want to disgruntle the team and and you know by working them that's just never good um and i know people there and it's just it, that that one that part of it wasn't good, you know. I mean, just try to fool the boys and all that. I mean, it's like that's that's like WCW shit. That uh, you know, I mean, it's like it, it works a little bit. And you, but then you know, I know what happened in WCW when no one believed in anything and yeah. no one listened to anything. And that's just you don't want to repeat that mistake. So when we were in Vegas and he first no showed the fan fest, I think all of us sort of said, well. I, it, it doesn't seem like that would be part of an angle because of the common denominator of, you know, why would you screw your fans? Like, we all said that sort of in, right, in, right. Because, in, because, in symphony. Be, yeah, because because Tony's a wrestling fan, and that would be the one thing he wouldn't want to do. But, um, you know, I'm my gut is, is that that was the beginning of it, so he did want to do it, you know, unless – Someone can, you know, point to the fact that uh, Tony didn't know and maybe, you know, maybe it turned out and they but, you know, it's just too much too quick. You know, what I mean, it's like it had that's on Saturday. And then it's like you're trying to tell me that, like, by Saturday night, we're working on a Brian Pillman angle, but Saturday morning we didn't have it. And, <laughs> you know, what I mean, that's that's uh, I mean, it's it's po- every anything's possible, but mm, I don't know. I don't know that, you know, show. And then you get this, you know, um, this TV, you know, like, you know, show you come back and what happened at the pay-per-view could that have happened? Oh yeah. hundred percent. Then do you, then do you follow up like the, what they followed up on Wednesday? No, yeah. absolutely not. What is the final story on the flight? The flight seems like this big mysterious thing about what oh. was going on. And I know well, Sean you- had some stuff and then Brian, had some stuff, but ultimately, like, what what was the the story there? I, you know, did somebody make a reservation for him on, you know, at at some point? I can't say no. I only know that when Brian called, you know, and Brian had a source at the airport, and I was there with Brian, and uh, they said that his flight was going out, you know, later after the show you mm-hmm. know what i mean like like n- that, that there, those two flights that uh you know he was never booked on those i don't want to say he was never booked on those two flights but they had no record he was booked on those two flights mm-hmm. um so he was you know if he was canceled 
and then rebooked for, for later possible, but they didn't even have anything in the system of that. So, um, you know, how, whatever, was there something there possibly was, um, but, but that would sort of indicate to me that somebody was trying to, um, get it out in some form. Although Sean says differently that, you know, it wasn't somebody trying to get it out, but you know, I don't know why would you book a flight like that and then, uh, then cancel it. Um, well, you know, I mean, you could say like, oh, they had a emergency phone call and convinced them, but that would tell you that, that, uh, this isn't a storyline, um, that there really was a problem. And, you know, I mean, if there was, again, I could see what happened on Sunday, but I can't see what happened on Wednesday. Yeah. So, so I go with the idea that it was something to get out. Somebody wanted it out. It got out to add mystery. Um, was the mystery a good thing? You know, a lot of people were talking about it Sunday morning. At the end of the day, you know, I mean, Sunday morning, there's people going like, this is so brilliant because now everyone's talking about it and the, the pay-per-view numbers are going to be up. Well, the pay-per-view number ended up being, like if you would have asked me what the pay-per-view number was going to be based on what I had heard leading them to the show, I would said 150. And the number that it looks like it's going to be is 150. Mm-hmm. So it didn't add anything, you know, and people are like, oh, that's down from the last one. Well, guess what you had game seven of the heat and celtics game and that is the re- that's not part of the reason that's the reason yeah you know almost 10 million right 10 it's million. just about 10 million viewers and and like the thing with the nba is is that that viewer number is is um because the nba viewers and the AEW viewers are the young viewers it's not like like 10 million nfl is huge but 10 million nfl is lots of old people yeah older people 10 million NBA is the same age as, as the, whatever it is, the 1 million AEW. It's mm-hmm. the, it's the same age group. It's not all the same people, but it's more of a crossover of the same people. So, um, an NBA, you, like I said, like an NBA game doing 10 million is going to hurt them more than a NFL game doing 10 million. Now, not more than an NFL game that's doing 20 million. No. But that's, you know, what an NFL game does 20 million unless you're deep in the playoffs. So this is bit this was this one hurt them a lot. And, you know, and that's nobody's fault. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I think Tony, you know, was, you know, he, he did the he freaking did the math. You know, it's like whatever it was, 29 percent or, you know, or the you know, 29 percent chance that it would go seven. And it was like, well, I'm going to book my date based on the odds. And, you know, the odds don't always work out based on the percentages. You, you, you have to make your decisions based on the percentages, but you also have to know that, uh, you know, if the percentage is 29% doesn't mean that it can't happen. It means that you're booking something, you know, could happen Saturday too. You know, could, was, couldn't Saturday have been the seventh game of the Warriors thing, right? Saturday, yes. So let's say they booked it on Saturday. You know, and the chances with the Warriors went seven, you know, that would have been an even bigger game. So it's like it's like, um, you know, you Sunday's the one with the percentages and they've been drawing better on Sundays than they did on Saturdays. So you go with the percentages and you, you know, acquiesce with the idea. You know, his mentality was is what we'll do is we will go long and we will keep the key matches aside from Wardlow and MJF, which is another thing about that. That was so interesting because. Why do you go first with that? Because at that point, that's one of the key matches, okay? And one of the key things that he was looking for was to keep the key matches from being on during the basketball game and saving them for after the basketball game's over and going an hour longer. But he put that one. Now, granted, he put it before the game. But if you are someone who's going to watch the game, you're not buying the pay-per-view, then turning off and watching the game and then coming back to the pay-per-view you're Mm -hmm. probably not buying the pay-per-view period unless the game is over and then you look on social media and you go oh all the key matches i want to see they're still going to happen maybe i'll buy the pay-per-view so that was what you know so that that's there's a mentality there and that did work to a degree i mean there were there were those late buys so not a ton but but they were there you know like he said you know, it's enough to make him a, whatever it was, a hundred thousand in the hundred thousands. It was under a million, but it was in the hundred thousands or maybe a hundred thousand, whatever it was. So, you know, that was the reason for the thing. It's the reason the show went long. Um, you know, a lot of criticism for the show going long. I mean, that was a perception thing. I know he talked to Dana. Dana shows go till, you know, longer than that. Um, 
but the UFC fans are used to it. If, if he was going till one in the morning, um, every pay per view, like or one fifteen, you know, Eastern time, like Dana does, the people would get used to it because they would know. When they didn't know, it kind of like threw them. But um, you know, and and as a general rule, I think you know, I think with the AW depth of roster and everything like that, that the uh, you know the the seven thirty to eleven fifty time frame, which is four hours and twenty minutes. That's about right. I know some people want shorter, but just too much talent. And, um, you know, I mean, and, and they, you know, so it was that extra, it was the extra hour that was the fatiguing hour. I have a journalism question for you. When it comes to the, the presser after the show was over. So in my mind, as, as I'm thinking about this, cause lots of people were asking me, are you going to go to the, to the presser after? And I was like, no, like not really. Like I don't have to write a story necessarily on the show, so I don't really need to ask any questions. And everybody and their, you know, every person with a YouTube page is going to shoot it and put it on YouTube anyway, so I can just watch it there if I wanted. But I said the only thing I would have what I would have asked or wanted answered was about the MJF thing. Yep. And the second he said that he was going to not answer any questions about that. I think I would have figured did, out how to silently walk out. Like did, I was did, pretty frustrated at that. Yeah, I was there, and I, I get and, I, and after it was over, I did ask again. <laughs> you know, because I'm not really good at people telling me they're not going to answer questions. I mean, right. as, as as you know better than anyone, um, having you know been with me with Kota Ibushi, sure. Um, you know, you tell me not to do that, and it's just like, well. <laughs> It's probably probably not a good thing in the long run because New Japan's probably not happy. But it's like you just can't. I'm just not wired that way. But but you know whatever. Um, it's it's um, yeah. I when he said that, I was like, oh god, that's the question everybody wants to ask. It's like I was. My thought was is like, God, you have time for a cover story. You know what I mean? Right. You're doing this thing. You got time for a cover story. So just at that point, it's like they don't have a cover story. Is it, is it like still up in the air? Um, and if it was still up in the air, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's the whole thing's weird because it's like what happened on Sunday had no relevance to Wednesday. And that's to me weird. Like to me, like if you have a, a story, you would want this, you know, it's like you threw away your Sunday for your Wednesday. Um, and it got people talking and everything, but it's like, why did you do your Sunday then? And that, you know, that type of thing would almost tell me that like, yeah, maybe, Maybe there weren't in such deep cahoots as 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 you would think, and they were flying, but both flying on the seat of their pants, like as this thing's going on, and just kind of fell into this as opposed to it being very well planned. I don't know. I just know where we're at now. You know, you know. I'm just like, I don't how we got there. Yeah, it's it's a cool story for down the line. You know, and we'll and I'm sure someday we'll know. But it's a cool story for down the line of how we got there. But I only want you know at this point, I only want to know where we're going and where where we're going next which is, um, you know, the uncertain, it's uncertain, but it's a work, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a work now, like how it got there. Um, was there real frustration? You know, was it a work three weeks ago? You know, in Max's case, I think it was, but whatever, you know, I don't, it's not really that important to me because I'm looking at the future. I'm not looking at the past in, in this one. Um, I, and, and the other thing is, is, is they, they did that, you know, I mean, that was a big show to do it on because you had, you know, the brass. And was that good? Man, I don't, I mean, it got people talking. I mean, they did a good rating considering the NHL game. I mean, it wasn't a incredible rating, but it was a, it was a good rating for sure. Um, and even more, you know, as far as, um, you know, I mean, they did, they beat WWE, Raw and SmackDown both with men. And when you're beating, there's no excuse to beat SmackDown and with, you know, network show. I don't care if it's, I don't care what this, what the story is. You know, you should not be beating SmackDown with men, uh, but, he, but they did, but uh, that's a different issue. But the, um, um, you know, as far as the, you know, doing it there with the swearing and then the blood in the Moxley match, it's very interesting. Um, I don't know if it's good. I mean, they went to the party. Everybody was happy from what I understand. So that's a good thing. I mean, you know, and, and again, when the importance period comes, which is months from now, 
you know, will you know, how will they view that? Did will they go and say, oh my God, there was so much excitement and so much action and unpredictability, and this is like cool, and that's what they want. Then, then it was a big success. Um, if they were, in, if the mentality was that uh, eh, we're getting ratings, but that swearing and all this, and this is low rent, and maybe we don't like the blood isn't such a cool thing. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what you know how they're going to view all of this. Um, but you know, I mean, it's it's like it's the biggest thing. The biggest thing isn't now, though. The biggest thing is the fall and the winter. Okay, just quickly going back to the to the press conference because I'm I, I, obviously I'm interested in stuff like this. But does it kind of kill the press conference as something uh, worth going to for you by him not answering that and then it turning to be what it what it turned out to be? It's almost like everyone there was kind of complicit to this thing because. You know, he had to hold on to what he was holding on to for the story, for the angle. I mean, I wasn't, um, I, you know, I mean, I wasn't thrilled on the flip side. Um, if you wanted to learn a lot, and maybe it wasn't like for me, because a lot of what Tony was talking about was stuff that I knew because he went through all a million different histories. I mean, I didn't know his exact schedule of running to this and running to that and running mm -hmm. to this. So I did learn a little bit there, but it's just like, um, I know someone who was with me who knew nothing and got an incredible, <laughs> incredible amount of knowledge of this business and Tony Khan and AEW in, you know, two hours. So it was certainly beneficial. There was much to learn. I mean, for me, there was much to learn too. Um, but I think for a lot of people who are just wanting to be reporters um, and wanting a story on this night as opposed to the big picture, I could definitely see them going like, uh, we didn't get any good quotes. We didn't get, you know, we end up, you know, talking about, you know, Tony's lifestyle and um, <laughs> him getting mad at Bischoff. Maybe some people got mad at him getting, you know, or got off on him getting mad at Bischoff, which to me was like, I found it funny because it's like, you know, I mean, it's like, it's like, you know, I listen to what, you know, it says I goes to. Listen to what he said. Is he right or is he wrong? I don't care about his delivery. I don't care about, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, it wasn't perfectly practiced. Was he right or is he wrong? Yeah, he's right. 100% right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and he's mad and he had any right to be mad. Somebody ignorant said stuff that was just ridiculously ignorant. So fine, he explained it. Um, we had this long discussion about live 60-minute matches that was just had nothing to do with anything. But it was a fun discussion, you know, and we had a discussion about the uh, first time he ever saw New Japan Pro Wrestling, which was the um, it would have been the second Tokyo. Well, the first the first time the second um, Tokyo Dome shows the one in um, the one that I was at the Starcade, the Tokyo Dome. So that's 91, I think, with Flair and Fujinami. Mm -hmm. And then the, then the one in 92, which was the um, um, God, I don't even remember what the, what the whole show was, but he's going through and trying to remember, you know, like who. Um, I mean, I, maybe this was even the first one, but, you know, like a certain match that I was at, but I didn't remember the match. And, you know, somebody, Corey, like looked it up. And so we're going through like trying to remember matches like it's ridiculous in some ways. But, you know, we're having a discussion about, you know, wrestling 31 years ago and me trying to remember a show I was at. Like I remember the main events, but I didn't remember all the prelims of that show and and trying to come up with like. You know, like uh, I brought up John Cena and Shawn Michaels going 55 minutes in London and Tony immediately going, that wasn't live. And in fact, it was like a three hour tape delay. It yeah. wasn't live. So it's like, yeah, he's right. He's, you know, well, you know, is that what people, the other reporters wanted to hear? You know, probably not. For me, it was interest. It's it's it was an interesting discussion about a bunch of different things that I never had any clue I would be talking about that night or having to remember. But at the end of the day, you know, it's just like that's that's where his brain was going um and you know i mean i could see some people being frustrated i mean with me um i mean there was the neg you know from my selfish standpoint it's like okay so we were up till four in the morning that night because yeah. because of that so that was a negative that was a big negative i got you know we go up till four in the morning i get sick whatever but i mean as far as being there and learning i learned a lot and that's all i'm here for is to learn so mm -hmm. so you know i it, would i go to the next one I mean, you know, I'd have to, I'd have to convince Brian. I don't, think Brian <laughs> I don't think Brian would want to, but I would probably. Um, I didn't say that that night. That night, I said next time we'll probably don't go to the press conference. But, <laughs> but maybe, um, maybe we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens next time. Yeah, I mean, I understand that piece of it. I understand the. 
uh, he's sort of holding court. You can kind of ask him, you know, certain things that he's really interested in. And I'm sure you get really fun answers and it makes you think, like, you know, wow, this guy's really knowledgeable about this and, and that. But like, I was just like, oh, I was just so frustrated. But oh, I, was, I, was, I wasn't even there, so I, I shouldn't really say I mean, no, 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 no. Because that was certainly the reaction that everybody had, you know, yeah. I mean, as far as like, because but first of all, the thing is, is that first it's it's punk and then it's Jade and then it's Jericho and we're all talking to them. And you can't ask Tony questions yet until they're gone. So they all go through their paces and everything. And, you know, Jericho sort of seemed a little strategic to do it that way. Right. Maybe. Uh, no, but Tony always goes last. So that's not really that's not a surprise. Punk was very good. Jericho was very good. Jade was interesting. Um, you know, you got the. you know, you. I think you got a pretty unvarnished version of who Jade thinks she is and, and everything. And and uh, so that was fine. And then, you know, Tony's there. And very first question, you know, what I mean, is uh, what about uh, MJF? And he shut it down. And yeah, you could just see everyone. Everyone in there was frustrated at that point. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so th- the other thing that I, I really noticed when I was at Rampage was uh, when Chris Statlander made the mention of, you know, the AEW originals and this and that. Yeah, and, boy, did pop people, didn't it? And, and it makes me wonder, uh, is there a possible scenario in which they utilize that where the, the, the live crowd, at least the, the, the crowd who goes to these shows – Seems to feel this way about the originals versus well, a lot some, of these some, WWE some folks. Well, some do. Some, some, some do. But do you want to turn all the WWE folks heel? To me, that's like, I mean, you could do the feud, and then you could just like end the feud and have some of the WWE folks again be baby faces. I mean, you could, you know, I mean, you could do the feud. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that if that's the direction they want to go. And it's the, you know, there's, um, and I think, I think that, um, uh, you know, those type of feuds, like, Again, I mean, I could give you scenarios where they really worked, and then I could give you. I mean, remember what, what was one in WCW, the Millionaires Club against the whatever, which was like just totally New terrible. Blood or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, it was, and you know, Russo tried it. It was terrible. Yeah. Um, so you know, like I could tell you ones that worked, and I could tell you know WCW against WCW and ECW against WWF, and that just totally blew, totally blew. But that was the booking that made it blow. Um, so much so that I think in the archives, you, there's actually you saying i don't normally fantasy book but here's how i would do this angle to make it work i think that's a old like that's a observer in the archives gem jesus christ vince and i talked about it <laughs> you know i mean we discussed the whole thing and then you know he and he went and everything he he said he was building towards and he was doing until he went to tacoma and then it was like that tacoma reaction just threw everything i'm mean, being like I said, I remember, I remember like that night I got a call from someone very, very high in the company. And I, to, I, you know, it was late. It was like way late after Raw's on Monday. Um, so it's probably like midnight our time at this point. And um, I said, Vince is going to give up on the whole thing. He's going to throw everything out. No way, no way. We've got Ed Cohen had to rebook the entire schedule. We've got months of stuff. We've already, you know, shot the thing with um, Tori Wilson and Vince and Linda. You know, it's just like no way is he giving it up. Two days later, he gave it up. I knew he would because I knew the reaction was too much and Vince would hear that reaction and um, he would just go with the idea that nobody cares about WCW and it's someone minor league and just the it's and, and you know, I, you know, who's to say. Right. But um, um, it would have been tough. It would. You know what? It would have been very, very tough for him to continue WCW as a standalone after he convinced his entire audience to hate them for all those years. It really would have been. Um, and then later, you know, he tried ECW as the standalone. Granted, it was years later going on the nostalgia and that flopped, too. So, you know, him operating a non WWE company, even though it's really him um, to that fan base. I don't know that, you know, I don't know that Vince was wrong. I mean, there's things that, you know, once when, when, he, when he kept the feud thing going, you know, I, he, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of mistakes he made. But the idea of running WCW as a separate television show and a separate entity with separate house shows under the Shane McMahon fake banner and everything like that, I don't know that he was wrong in, in ditching all that. That was the, obviously the goal. That I don't know because, um, you know, having learned – and even even then, the WCW – you got to remember, the WCW brand was so tarnished at the time. Yeah, You're trying to revive – it's like it was not a – it's like, again – that is the thing about making your company uncool. If WCW was cool, maybe it would have worked. But he had, you know, to his fan base, he had made them so uncool. I mean, I remember 
that there was um, a big show in Toronto, um, which was going to be a Monday night show in Toronto. And this would have been after the switch was going to be made where, you know, because Monday was going to be WCW night, you know, and Friday or whatever the night they were on UPN Thursday, I forget what it was at the time, was going to be WWE night. So the Monday shows that people thought were going to be Raw's were going to build where they would still be called Raw, but it was WCW Raw. Or maybe they would call it WCW Nitro, I'm not sure. But it would be a WCW show on Monday. And, you know, I had talked about it, and people in Toronto are just like, we don't want to see WCW. And it's just like, well, it's, you're really seeing WWE. Just yeah. be cool. It's Shane McEwish, you know, all this. And it was just like, you're really going to see Raw. I mean, that's that's just what Raw is going to be. It's like, but we don't want to see WCW. And it was like, they. I mean, the reaction was such like, mm, you know. They've taught people to hate WCW. It's going to be very difficult. They're not going to want to see it. And then, and that Tacoma show was like right there. That was right in their face, you know. And you know, you teach someone to hate something for long enough. It's like the whole thing. You teach someone that the brand is uncool. It's going to be real hard to draw with that brand. And that was like the thing I was talking with Brian about on Wednesday night that a lot of people understood and a lot of people didn't understand. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so ratings from Wednesday. What did uh, we learn from all of this? Well, did we learn know, anything? Um, did we learn anything? Um, I mean, the Max promo did real, real well, um, which was the peak of the show. And it did tremendous in 18 to 49. So that was good. Um, they did have a big dip after the thing ended. And it was sort of normal after that. They did go against an NHL game that was a high rated NHL game. You know, and and the 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 football players golf deal, which was a big big deal, and beating beating the football players golf deal with all the pub that that thing got, I mean that's actually a really strong thing for um for AEW. Plus AEW beat two of the four networks all night. Granted, you know a lot of reruns and everything, but they still beat two of the four. And then the other two, um, they beat each in one hour. You know, they didn't beat they each had a show that beat one of the hours. So in 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 television. The two hours were third of not third on cable, but third of everything on television, you know, including network. And that is never um, actually actually, you know what? I think um, hour two, um, there's actually a show on Univision that did great on hour two. So so it was actually it, it was actually fourth, but no one considers Univision. So but whatever. So so but the thing is, it's still that's Univision. Um, but still. So so considering how many people were watching TV that night, they did great. Um um, you know, so, you know, I mean, yeah, it was a great number, but, um, you know, beat, beat raw and men beat SmackDown and men beat SmackDown and men, both 18 and 34 and 35 to 49. Um, you know, when people, you know, big game, this, when they didn't draw a million and people are like the casuals, the casuals, the casuals. And it's like, God damn, you know, like, you don't understand TV, TV is <laughs> different now, but the key is, and this is the valid thing. Okay. Casuals when it comes to television is your 50 plus audience. And I will tell you right now because we talked about this already the last time that I went through this. They are never going to gain in 50 plus audience, no matter what they do. Okay. When um, WCW and WWF grew back in the old days, they grew the younger audience. They did not really grow the older audience that much. Now, now with a younger audience, the reality is, is that, um, you know, whatever WCW's, um, WCW, AEW's growth year to year has been pretty damn high, but it's not, like, you know, there's 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 the 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 ceiling is much lower because people in that age group have more to do. And also, um, you know, they 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 are missing the one ingredient, you know, which which is that guy um, that just gets people talking. Um, they don't have that that guy. They've got a great crew, but they don't have that guy. They don't have Steve Austin. They don't have Dwayne. They don't have Bill Goldberg. Uh, Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, whatever. They don't have that. Um, for not having that, they're doing pretty damn great. Now, um, what they are missing, and it's even more pronounced this week, is women. Women 35 to 49. Um, you know, if that is your casual audience, yes, they are not growing. In fact, they are not doing well with that audience. They are doing pretty, gr pretty good with m men 1834, pretty great with men 35 to 49. Women 35 to 49, they are not doing great. Okay. Um, they were doing better than, you know, I mean, they've dropped a lot. They, and there's, you know, and part of it is the growth of men has come at the same time with the, um, uh, you know, uh, lowering of the women's numbers. I mean, you've gone from, 
you know, you've gone up to like 71, 72% men this week, which is very high for wrestling um, modern day because WWE is much, much lower. And, you know, it's like, I, I feel like I'm almost a broken record saying it, but, you know, you could argue with the reasons why, but you can't argue that it's not happening or it hasn't happened. It's happened. So that's what you are. Instead of talking the casuals, you are talking women 35 to 49. That is what they are weak in. And if they had that at the level of Raw and SmackDown, they would be, um, well, they would have beat both of them this week mm -hmm. um, because they were only behind by a little bit without them. So that's the difference between WWE and AEW is AEW is, has run off women 35 to 49 and you can make all, you know, whatever reasons you want to give, you can give. Um, I know why, you know why I talk to women. I know why I hear it every freaking week. Um, exactly why it's part of my life. You know what I mean? But you know, you can deny it too. But the point is, is that even if that's not the right reason and, you know, and all this, the reality is, is that um, it does exist. And that is what for the big growth, what they need is to do what WCW does, WWE does in that demo. And if they did what WWE does in that demo, they would have substantial growth and it would be way over a million viewers. Uh, OK, so even even without the over 50 that they're never going to get and they're not going to get that. So this NBA schedule here, uh, what the Warriors, what the Warriors Celtics do last night, like a four in the in in the eighteen to forty nine and eleven million or something like that. Um, I just I, I hadn't you know I didn't look at the numbers before we went on the air for the game yet, but I mean I knew it was in the eleven a little over eleven million I heard, but I didn't see the eighteen forty nine number. Okay, so the rest of the series, uh, there is a game Sunday night at which five p.m. Which, uh, 5, 5 p.m. our time, 8 p.m. Eastern, yes, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so that's going to do a number on the pay-per-view, big time. That pay-per-view is uh, doing a number on itself, by the way. Yes, yes, but it doesn't matter because WWE, it doesn't, they're like UFC, it doesn't matter. I mean, that's the greatest thing to be is is a content provider to where even if no one watches my content, I'm still getting paid for it. So, yeah, it will do, um, that show will, will, will um, be hit very, very hard, but. It doesn't matter. Wednesday is yep. game three, 6 p.m. Pacific. And isn't there an NHL, too, on, on Wednesday? I mean, there, I just, I'm almost question. sure. Um, I just remember when I was charting out next week in Independence, it was like AEW's going to get hit hard Wednesday. Wednesday number won't be that good. Now, the week after, I think that they'll be, they'll be, they should be doing pretty well, um, provided everything goes right. But the next one, this coming Wednesday is going to be, you know, very, very difficult. If they if if they come close to what they did now, then um the max thing was a one week home run because it would have that's the only way they could. Um it, yeah, it looks like uh Avalanche Oilers game three is on Monday and then game four uh is that right? Or no, get, but that, that, that might be game four. Yeah, I think that would be game four on Monday. So if there's a game five, it would be Wednesday. So there probably will be. So, um, yeah, you know, that's not going to help them either. But the NBA finals enough, you know, even without the NHL is going to hurt them a lot, you know. So, yeah, it's going to be. So so Wednesday, Thursday will be ignorant take day when the rating goes down, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. And then Friday would be game four, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific. 9 p.m. Eastern, and then if there is... So, 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 so it's going to go against Rampage 2, then? Yes. Okay, so Rampage will get killed. SmackDown will get hurt. Um, you know, no, is it is it on network or is it on cable? It's on ABC. Okay, so it's on ABC, so it will also, it'll hurt SmackDown a lot. And you then know. if there's a game five, uh, Monday... Yeah, uh, so, at uh, at six and nine, and then game six would be Thursday at six and nine. Then game seven would be Sunday again. Yeah. So the um, the raw the raw you know that that week raw will get her. So raw scot free this week. I mean, maybe do they, do they, do they, I think do they have NHL? I'm sure because they're still in the uh, the conference. I, I actually finals. Had, I actually had written all of this. I think that they're going against NHL Monday. So that will be so Raw should do about what they did this week because Raw did not have NBA this week. Um and then um the Raw the following week is is gonna be uh um yeah that one 
That one could be a bad one. Um, yeah, hockey is essentially every day until both of these series wraps up. Yeah. So, so yeah. And then, uh, you know, after the NBA playoffs are done and the hockey playoffs are done, you know, then we got July is usually a bad month, too. So don't expect the recovery all the way right away. August will probably be a big month. I mean, that's that's a real recovery. And then, um, you know, from there, we'll see. All right. Best of Super Juniors. What's the update? Um, I mean, uh, Hiromu Takashi won for the third time in four years. Um, I, it's interesting to me because, like, I was sitting there going, like, what would I do? And I, you know, and, and I thought, okay, New Japan is is opening up doors and bigger buildings, right? And, um, you know, not bigger buildings, but opening up, you know, opening up the buildings more. And they're trying to get those fans back. So what do you do to get the fans back? You go with your top guys that have the most charisma, Hiromu Takahashi. So to me, it was a no-brainer, but boy, did the reaction. I don't know what it is. Oh, we've already seen this. He's already won, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, you know, it's like, it's like uh, this is all I will say. It is, you know, you are trying to, right now, New Japan is trying to rebuild its live attendance. To do so, you have your top players in the position to do that. Desperado is fantastic. Hiromu Takashi is a tons bigger star. You got to go with your bigger stars now. I mean, I saw so much negativity. Oh, he's already won it. He's won three times in four years or whatever it is, right? And it's like, I don't care. You know what I mean? It's like, it's about rebuilding your audience now with your top guys. That's why Okada's world champion. You know, that's why Shingo Takagi's not world champion. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you you know, this is what you got to do to um, – to get back, you've got your mega stars and you've got your guys. And uh, Taiji Ishimori, I mean, I don't know that Hiram was winning, but he should um, because Taiji Ishimori is not that guy. And Desperado is not that guy, even though he's had some great matches this year. And Hiromu is that guy. So um, I'm sure that's why they went that way. And I expected that that's why they would went that way. If situations were different and they were selling out every building, um, I would say, hey, you know what? Uh, I'd probably go with somebody else. I would have gone with somebody else, but you know, that's not the situation right now. Was there any news coming out of that show? Shoes Robinson's got appendicitis. Uh, Kent is back. Um, Sonata. So, Sonata's back. Good. You know, I mean, um, I'm glad he's healthy. Uh, maybe so, you know, and now juice is not healthy. So now, um, you know, I mean, the natural match is juice against Sonata because Sonata never lost the belt. And uh, appendicitis, so if he had his appendix, I, you know, removed, I mean, realistically, um, it should be three months. The, I know I know he's going to do it in six weeks because that's what wrestlers do. Um, but <laughs> it's pushing it. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure he will. You know, it's like, the, you know. I remember when Matt Hardy did it in six weeks, and it was just like, I know he's going to do it in six weeks. <laughs> um, I remember when I had it, like six weeks in, it was just like, you know, okay, I don't feel that bad. I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? And it was like, what a dumb thing <laughs> that turned out to be. But, you know, again, I wasn't going to load myself with painkillers to do it. So, yeah. um, but, you know, it really is, I mean, no wrestler's ever going to take three months off, and I know Juice won't, won't either. But it's uh, to get back to normal. It's three months if he if he has the surgery, um, and I don't see how you don't have the surgery. But um, you know, everything's you know I don't know. Would you expect the uh, forbidden door stuff to 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 really start uh, if if not tonight uh, the, the this next week? Because they yes. I, know, I know they did the Tanahashi thing, which I told you off air that I was kind of disappointed in. Um, but, uh, I mean, I, there's, there's, okay. So I, I wasn't because he walked through the door and he got a big pop in front of, with all those people. So uh, to me, it's such a great sign to me. Like when you see it's, it's a great sign to me about wrestling fans and everything, because, you know, one of the things that you would say five years ago or, or maybe seven years ago, and you would be hundred percent right is, you know, those guys will walk through the door and no one's going to know who they are. You know what I mean? And that doesn't happen now. And that, you know, when the real one that really shocked me was when uh, Minoru Suzuki came out in Chicago and dropped Moxley with, with the gotcha pile driver. 
and you know you were there mm -hmm. and it was like that was eye-opening because it's like it's not okada it's not tanahashi you know it's not a guy it's not the great muda or jushin liger who you know have a history in the united states it's this guy who's you know a pretty cool character and all that and he walked out and i mean the minute the he didn't even have to walk out the music played and granted it's a very distinctive song and but the thing it said the king right there and it was like half the people knew who he was just from the king and that reaction was just so big so i just thought that okay um all you got to do is come out and get a pop now granted should they have had a video package telling you who he was yeah 100 percent, yes of course they should have of course they should have you know you can do the, the that and also have a thing and you know the announcers tried to get him over and they told you he was great but you do need you know a you know they i mean they, they, they did as good as they're going to do but yes you need a video pack especially since he's in the main event of the show i mean more you know i'm not saying you need a video package when uh the great okan comes out um but but you do for tanahashi and you do for okada and you do for the matches that need to be drawing matches and it's because even though the show sold out the pay-per-view is absolutely is absolutely a shot in the dark we have no idea how it will do and it's a very important thing because um you know AEW fans are used to every four months every three months yeah uh, um and this is one month so um and you know they got it they, they got it the guys got to be on tv doing those angles because if they're not on tv doing those angles um i don't think that it will do as great uh so, but, but yeah, the problem is, is Dominion's 12th. So I don't think that New Japan can go all out or they could probably release the whole lineup until the 13th. So at that point, you got to go balls out from the 13th on. Right, right. But, but yes, should they have some guys and some matches tonight and, and Wednesday of this week? I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, and I, the, I I love the match. I just, I like like you said, I wanted a little bit more. I wanted a video package or I wanted a you know, an acknowledgement from Tanahashi just instead of standing there. And then, boom, next thing, Max is coming on. It was just, it just seemed, to, it just seemed like a lesser I, important I, I, thing. I, if you would go, first of all, um, it probably would have been good because, you know, Tanahashi's a great promo, is to do the Tanahashi promo with the English trans translation over it, you know, short, you know, 35, 45, 50 seconds. And also have Punk put him over, you know what I mean? And just go, oh, my God, this is the guy. I've been wanting this my whole life or whatever. Or, you know, however however he wants to put it. But, yes, um, that should have been part of it, too. Yeah. All right. Uh, the In Your House show is Saturday. I, actually, you know, before we get there, I know one other thing I wanted to ask you about Forbidden Door. What do you think is a success as far as the pay-per-view number? Um, well, it's, it's 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 just a learning number. I mean, I guess what one ten maybe is a success. I don't know. I mean, I don't expect one fifty coming back. Yeah. I was just wondering what expectation would be. I haven't talked. I haven't kind of show. I have not talked to anyone about any expectations. I mean, I don't expect it to be as big just because people aren't used to coming back, but maybe the audience is one of those audiences that will, you know, this is our pay-per-view audience and we're going to buy everything. I don't know. Um, you know, it's, it's real important though, because if it does 150, then it like locks it in forever, you know, yeah. as a big annual event, if it does 90, it, kind of tells you eh, you know maybe it didn't do so good and not that you throw it away because the live gate obviously is going to be over a million dollars and um you know AEW still only done one of those in history and this will be the second so um you know it's so it's it's, it's already a success in that realm but a pay-per-view you know yeah we have to find out what what it will do on pay-per-view um and if it does 150 and i don't like i said if it does 150 that basically tells you that AEW needs to do more pay-per-views because if they can do 150 with a month filled, um, then, you know, they certainly should be going up to eight, you know, because one of the things this year was the clash of the champions idea was a way to have four of these big television specials to go with your big four pay-per-views. And that would be eight big shows in the year, you know, but the clashes ended up being something completely different. So now there is room for, more big shows on because four to me is too few 
you know, 12 might be too many. Um, you know, I'm going to say eight sounds like really good, you know, maybe six, but I think eight. Uh, but, but this will be an answer, you know, as far as if it does like 75, then it's like, you know, maybe these people only want it once every three months. And that's, that's fine too. That's what you learn. Yeah. It definitely seems like, uh, you know, a, a hardcore, hardcore pro wrestling fan base pay-per-view. And I will learn about what that, what, what that audience is as far as buying pay-per-views. Cause I'm so excited about that show just because I know the quality of the wrestling is going to be high, but also I'm very interested to see how the show is going to be booked. I imagine first time, you know, Tony and, and Ghetto are going to work very closely together and make sure that each company is respected. Uh, oh, oh uh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's like it's like there's stuff. I mean, when you look at the talent, when you talk about like Zach and Will Ospreay, you know, um, going against pick your name. You know what I mean? I mean, there are some, un, you know. Okada, you know what I mean? Like Brian Danielson, um, Adam Page, John Moxley, you know what I'm saying? It's like you can play mix and match and mm -hmm. unbelievable stuff that we've never seen before. Yeah. I mean, there's there's like seven guys that Brian Daniels can can wrestle that would be just like literal, you know, I mean, and you know, Zach being number one on the list, right? Like a match that, you know, you're waiting years to see. And even if you're not the match will be so freaking good that you'll just want to see a rematch, you know, because, you know, so it's like, but, but then the question is, do you do that now or do you put them in a tag and tease it and do the match later? And there's nothing wrong with putting them in a tag and teasing it for later mm -hmm. because this is not one time, you know, in theory, this is going to be open the door for all kinds of great shit, you know, whenever you need it. I mean, it's, it, it could be an incredible, almost panacea type thing for, for um, serious fans who want to see incredible matches because you will never run out of incredible matches with these two companies working together. You will yeah. never run out of them. Yeah. That's why I hope they really go gangbusters on it because at least if you do, you can say, okay, this is the number that we're going to do. And we really push this thing so hard um, cause I don't want them to go, Oh yeah. You know, we, we threw a secondary main event in there and that's the number. And then you're like, well then, you know, maybe I, I want to see them go gangbusters to see what that number really could be. Yeah. It's weird because it's like, you know, one of the, the gangbusters would be that, that great Will Ospreay singles match, but I don't know how much that means. Um, you know, as far as like on pay-per-view, unless they see Will Ospreay on television, and even then, like getting him over in a week isn't going to be that easy. But then maybe you have this thing where, you know, have this you have this card. And the one thing is, is, you know, those people in the building are going to react to these matches really mm -hmm. big. So that's a positive in the sense that maybe even if the first one does OK, maybe it'll be so big that, you know, it will it will be one of those things where, oh, my God, it, the legend will outstrip the pay-per-view number. And, you know, in historically, you know. It's like it's like uh, the first Royal Rumble pay per view may not have done big, but down the line, I mean, isn't it the greatest thing in the world? They have a Royal Rumble pay per view every year because, you know, they don't have to book anything great and they're guaranteed the second biggest number of the year. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, like you, you know, those traditions take time. So, and this could be, you know, this could be a, a great tradition for AEW too. All right, let's get to this and uh, and, and, and New Japan. Yeah, let's get to this in your house NXT show. So the show is Saturday on Peacock. What is what is the time? Do you know what the time is off the top of your head? Eight o'clock Eastern, five Pacific. Okay. Uh, so uh, there are six matches. Anything stand out to you? Is you know no, no, nothing stands out to me. Um, the show might be all right. The last one was better than I thought. I'm not going in with a negative attitude, but I have no match on that show that I'm excited for, not one. And usually when it came to these NXT shows, I would be excited about every single match on the show, maybe in some cases all but one. Um, not excited about uh, Mandy Rose and Wendy Chu at all. Not excited about the women's tag team title at all. Braun Breaker and Joe Gacy, no. Um, pretty deadly in the creeds. I have a weird interest in that match just because I find the creeds so uniquely fascinating um, just because you just don't know what's going to happen and they're absolute freaking freaks. And then the other guys, you know, look, we'll see how good they are. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I, I, 
I've heard they're good. They they're not bad, but now we'll see. You know how good are they? Because they're going to be in there with you know kind of green guys that are incredible athletes who have like unique potential. Um, but um, I mean Hazen Grimes. I guess if you're going to say, am I interested in match Hazen Grimes? You know, yeah, yeah, that'll be. I know that match will be very good. Yeah, this. Uh... But 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 having said that. Ain't going to be any better than, you know, Brian Danielson and Matt Seidel that I watched for free on Friday night in a, in a throwaway. Ain't going to be that level either. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is, yeah, this is not a lineup that I actually stopped watching NXT because I was so frustrated with how they were treating uh, Hickam and Jiro and, and Kushida, like to a point where it was just. Well, like, Kushida's I, not even there anymore. Well, it, the, you know. They were they were just treating them so poorly, and you know I don't know. There's a thing with Asians and and that TV show that was just driving me nuts. But uh, yeah, I was like, ah, you know, maybe I'll come back and watch this because it's on. Kind of yeah, I can just throw it on in the background. But man, the the lineup in of itself it leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah, very weak, very weak. You know, so yeah, I, I don't think the pay, I don't think the Sunday pay per view strong at all either. You know, no. I mean maybe maybe they'll add some stuff on SmackDown, but I mean. You know, I mean, Cody, look, Cody and Seth will, will tear the house down. They're going to have an incredible match. But um, there's not a lot of depth. I mean, I mean, to me, like the Mustafa Ali and uh, and um, Theory build is like was so incredibly terrible um, that it's almost like it's a negative. Um, I have no interest in watching that weird fetish of how you treat, you know, undercard baby faces thing that just doesn't appeal at all. Um you know, I mean, the women's three-way will be good for sure. And then, uh, you know, I guess they're going to throw, like, we'll see if they throw somebody in there with Ronda coming off the six-way. I don't know. Can you give me a reason why the pay-per-view is sort of being booked as it is? Now, I, we, we know the, the Sasha and Naomi thing. That's two of that the changed, matches. That, that changed that, two, that, that two changed, big matches. That yep. changed the, that side. But, 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 but having said that, on the Raw side, the match that they replaced it with is far better than Bianca Belair and Naomi. On the SmackDown side, um, no matter if Ronda wrestles, you know, Raquel, if, if they go in that direction, obviously that's can't even come close to what Raka and Sasha Banks, uh, Ronda and Sasha Banks would do. So, um, you know, you get one plus and one minus there. But other than that, like, was there anything, were, were people injured? Was there a COVID could, outbreak? Was Vince Dealing no, with could, other stuff because there's just the the build of this thing has been so bad. Yeah, you know, well, you know what it is 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 that number one, they don't have the pressure because they don't have to sell pay per view buys, and number two, all the focus was on um, the three stadium shows now too. But at the time they put this together, it was like let's just get through this and and you know put big stuff on the stadium shows. You know, it's like Vegas and SummerSlam. That's that's what the whole summer was built around trying to get big, big crowds for that. You know, the Vegas thing is interesting because, um, you know, they had allegedly um, 17,000 tickets out. Um, well, I mean, they did, but we don't know what paid versus paper. And they come back and all those people are, you know, allowed to buy tickets on Wednesday. And, and you know, we had, what, 9,300. So it was 56% of the people who had tickets when given a chance to buy tickets again, 44% did not. I don't know what that means. So it maybe maybe many of them were going with the idea. And, and you know, this says, says part of it is, is that percentage tells you people were going because it's cool to go to a stadium show because that, that's a unique thing. And if it's just an arena show at MGM Grand, it's not as cool, even though it's the same company, which is an interesting lesson because I believe with AEW, which has not tried this, that the same thing would happen. Like, uh, I'm, you know, whatever. Um, I mean, AEW Wednesday show, that Wednesday show, I mean, like, now that it's over and everything and, and everything, they, you know, I don't know if they could have gotten a stadium, but, man, that should have been a stadium show. L.A. in the stadium, in this, you know, it would have been, um, it would have been a statement, especially with all those executives from Warner there. If they were in there and saw 30,000 people, you know, instead of 15, um you know what the reaction would be. It'd be like, we got something big here that we don't even know about. I mean, I think they still probably got that reaction with the sold out forum, knowing, you know, um, but, um, you know, would have been even more impressive to them, you know, with a, you know, 
Bank of America Stadium, you know, whatever the name of that stadium is right downtown, which they would draw much better in because it's downtown than in Englewood anyway. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're done here. So you and Brian will be back after uh, tomorrow, I guess tomorrow night, uh, later in the evening. Um, Observer issue is out. Like I said, the MJF story is really good. So definitely check that out. Uh, but yeah, so for Dave, I am Garrett. And to everybody, thanks for listening. <laughs>